Though there are arguably multiple speakers in my tenantless body, I found that as I read, the poems began to combine to form one very particular voice, an elusive voice, one that has the distinct tone of someone who is tired of your shit, but doesn't want you to leave. Simultaneously very far away and whispering a joke in your ear, cooking you terrible eggs, telling you everything is meaningless, but tenderly and with a smile. The book isn't so much clear as having the ambience of clarity. The language is precise, rarely floral. Everything feels deliberate, assured. The poems themselves have very short lines. Not one poem or section of a sequence goes over the page, as though there are a weight limit per poem. In an interview, A.K. Blakemore said of the translation process, one of our concerns was working out how to retain the depth of expression and the richness of the idea, while also keeping the poems short delicate, concise, the spirit of the poem as a whole. There's something deeply satisfying about being able to grapple with a poem whole, not having to turn the page, allowing the reader to swallow each one like a little ice cube or a pill. In Michael Donaghy's book, The Shape of the Dance, he wrote about how poetry employs techniques like rhythm, form and rhyme to burn it deeper than prose. I love this idea that poetry burns deeper. Anne Carson wrote, if prose is a house, poetry is a man on fire running quite fast through it. It wasn't the content or the rhythm, but the shape and mass of Yo-Yo's poems that burnt deep in my mind. As you read My Tenantless Body, you become accustomed to the feel of them. I think, having spent time with the book, I could now go to my cupboard, measure out some dry chickpeas or rice into my hand and say, this, this is roughly how much a yo yo poem weighs. Mm -hmm.